Frankie de Jong is the transfer that is holding everything up for Manchester United so far this summer. But we need more signings in different positions. It's not just central midfield where we need to make a signing. And we know we need to make a new attacking signing to galvanise this attack. In this video, what I want to do is discuss Anthony and whether or not he would be the perfect signing for Eric Ten Hag and for Manchester United, as I said, to galvanise this attack, to bring a new versatility, directness, goals, assists, certainly to help this attack be better than it was last season. I'm going to run through everything in this video. And we're going to tactically take a look at Anthony and whether or not he would be the perfect signing. So please, if you do enjoy this video by the end of it, make sure you subscribe to United People's TV. Just go down there, hit the subscribe button. There she is. Hit the notification bell as well. You get a ping every time I go live with a video. But Anthony, right? Anthony is not the name that would have been on the top of everybody's list at the start of summer. What we all felt we needed was a versatile forward. Somebody who could really, I suppose, support Cristiano Ronaldo, but also offer something on the wings. That's why uh, the links with Christopher and Kunku made sense. Uh, but he's since signed a new contract to RB Leipzig and pretty much when Ralph Ranick left the club, those rumours sort of, they died. I think that was a player that Ragnit was recommended, recommending, sorry. It's all gone quiet in the Western front there. Of course, we were linked with Darwin Nunes, but as soon as the price, we found out it was 75 million plus 25 in add-ons, we stepped the hell away from that. And he's gone to Liverpool. They paid the money. They wanted him done and dusted. So Anthony is the name now that we are hearing a lot about. We go over here to see what Fabrizio Romano is saying. He said, look, Manchester United are really interested. Already had contacts to explore a deal. Been told that the players camp is now asking Ajax to listen to bids for Anthony, even if the price tag will be high. Now, I covered a video earlier this week that suggested that Ajax were holding out for a big, big price. £69 million for him. That is an outrageous price. First things first, he's not worth that much. That is an overestimation, that is an overmarket value and a, a sign that Ajax do not want to sell him. But as you can see here, covered by Paul Hurst in the Times, Anthony, he's keen on this move to Manchester United. He's gone as far as to say he is determined to join Manchester United. We scroll down and we read a little bit of the news. He said, Anthony is determined to secure that move. Uh, his pri United's priority is De Jong, we know that. And then we're going to move on to an attacker. We go down here and he says, look, Anthony is hopeful of a move to Old Trafford this summer. He believes he's ready to play in the Premier League and is interested in working again with Eric Ten Hag. Now, Ten Hag's obviously left Ajax this summer, come to Manchester United. Ten Hag was the manager who brought him in from Sao Paulo and he really progressed under Ten Hag's stewardship at Ajax. Now, Ajax don't want to sell him. And their manager, Alfred Schroeder, their new manager, has said, look, we want to keep Anthony at Ajax. I want to work with him and the club knows this but as Fabrizio repeats there his agents have asked Ajax to think about proposals to listen to proposals so United I think obviously we can uh, at this point in time we're still hypothetical FC we seemingly have to get this Frankie de Jong deal done before we move on but the question that we need to discuss here today I think is whether or not Anthony is the right man for us to be spending I don't know how much we'd spend on him okay but given that we're hearing reports of this, this is the 69 million. It's never, never in a million years you're going to get 69 million for Anthony. Let me know how much you think he's actually going to be worth. But it feels that after Darwin Nunez has gone now and Kunku, that sort of, that never really happened. Anthony, it seems to be the focus. Now, kind of a surprise for me because I, I expected us to sign somebody who would be able to play a lot more central because Anthony is definitely a right winger. But then if you take a look at this, this is, I found this very interesting. This was a video uh, on TFO in, in real life, uh, and it's about the truth about Ten Hag. And if you compare the two pizza charts here on the left, this is Ajax in 2018, and this is Ajax in 2021. And it shows how uh, Ten Hag's style developed over those three years at Ajax. And you can see there's a couple of key things to see here. Number one is deep circulation. Number two is transitions, and I'll explain exactly why and why that is linked with Anthony. Deep circulation going up to 87 from 66. It just shows that Ajax were more comfortable keeping the ball and possession in possession, keeping the ball in their own half, just knocking it about. They became far better at that. Whilst at the same time, transitions went down 52 to 14 because the deep circulation went up. The football became slower, more precise, rather than needing quick transitions. And you can see here that part of that was the wing play. The wing play went up from 17 to 48. All these three stayed similar. 
But Anthony was a part of that. And of course, Sebastian Haller being there and being a target man rather than Tadic, who was more of a false nine, that was part of that as well. But given that we're about to play with Cristiano Ronaldo as our target man this year, you can see where why, why I'm alluding to the fact that Anthony may well be a good signing. We take a look at his numbers and his stats in terms of um, these, and you can see exactly where his strengths are. Look at that. Assists, 99th percentile. Of, of compared to other attackers is, is incredible. I find these ones quite interesting. Progressive carries, 98th percentile. Progressive passes, 91. You can talk, you can look at his pass completion if you want, but still he's in the top 10% for progressive passes. Passes that have played forward and reached their intended target. And progressive passes received, 99th percentile. Interceptions I found quite interesting because you would imagine surely pressures will be high as well, but no, he's obviously just smart at, at where, where he places himself. Compared to players down here, look, Di Maria, Mares, those sorts of players, Ziyech as well, those sorts of players who hug the wing, those sorts of players who'd love to cut inside. And Anthony is not somebody, like, as I said, we were, I really understood the links with Christopher and Kunku early this summer. I thought he's somebody who can play as a centre forward, as a supporting striker, as a, as a number nine. It made sense. I was like, I can understand that he can probably fill more than one role. Anthony, doesn't really tick that box. Anthony is a straight up right, right winger. Down there, 97 appearances on the right wing. Only, what, 13 combined in all of the other, other positions. His strengths lie on the right wing. And if we now take a look at the tactics board and we think, how are we going to line up with him? It would be like this. I'm getting a bit excited here with De Jong and Martin as my word. Let me, I don't know, make that thread. I think we'll get De Jong, but uh, Martin, that was a, that's a bit different. But this is what we would probably line up with if Anthony was to join. Sancho being out here. You know what's hilarious about Sancho, right? I've pulled his picture up here. We spent ages, two seasons, going after Sancho. And we signed him. I'm like, finally. Finally, we've solved our right wing problems. And then he ended up having the majority of his best performances on the left wing. Weird, isn't it? But now, with Anthony, straight up, there's no doubt whatsoever... If we were to sign him, he would play on the right wing. Simple as that, which means, Sancho, you're playing on the left. Now, if you're looking at options that we could put there on the right wing. Oh, let me move that out of the way. You've got Ilanga, you've got Rashford, you've got Ahmad and Pulisci. I don't personally think they'll all probably be here at the start of the season. I think maybe Ahmad or Pulisci will go out on loan, depending on how much they impress during the preseason tour. In terms of shape, the shape will be quite obvious. We know we're going to play the 4-2-3-1. And as I said, if we take a look here at Anthony's stats, he's very, very good at progressively bringing the ball forward, at passing the ball forward. That's something that he has a lot of experience in. And in Ronaldo, the one thing that we've really got to sort for Ronaldo is service, right? We need Ronaldo this season to be operating in about that region, okay? Ideally, when we look at the heat map of every game, that's where we want Ronaldo to be. That's where we will get the best out of Ronaldo. Last season, Ronaldo's heat map, depending on what game you watched, I swear to God, you could have drawn it as big as that. He was dropping so deep, getting so frustrated at a complete lack of service that he had to try to drop deep to find the ball. Anthony is somebody who will improve the service. He'll bring some real width. And Anthony... And Sancho, as our two wingers with Ronaldo through the middle, if it works, you could definitely, definitely see it working very, very well. Anthony is somebody who... You, we can talk all day about whether or not it's the right thing for Eric Ten Hag to be going after his, his Ajax players. But he trusts them. Anthony was brought in from Sao Paulo. He became a top-level star underneath Eric Ten Hag's coaching. He's broken into the Brazil national team. I think he's got about six caps now. He's somebody, as I said, who will bring a real element of, uh, element of width. He should mean that Ronaldo can sit on the edge of that box and get some... We need, we need deliveries into this area. That's where Ronaldo is. Ronaldo's the greatest goal scorer of all time, man. Maybe I've been focusing on the wrong thing this summer. I, w I was focusing in my head on Manchester United not signing a right winger like Anthony, but signing somebody who could play uh, second fiddle to Ronaldo. But another way of looking at that He's saying, no, Sam, instead of doing that, let's find somebody who brings real balance to our attacking shape. Because w let's be honest, Manchester United for the last God knows how many years 
we've been a heavily left hand sided team. It's been we've been quite we've been predictable. Every time we're not on the left hand side, we try to find the left hand side because we've had no real consistent threat down the right. I'll tell you a big part of that has come from the fact that we don't have a fullback we can rely on down there. And I wouldn't be surprised if Ten Hag did try and sign a right back this summer, even though we've got so many priorities. And Anthony, if he was to sign and he was consistent, would bring a new threat down that right wing, which means that instead of just having a threat on one side, we've got a threat on two sides. That stretches the defence. That creates gaps. That means that Ronaldo will find more space. And that enables, if look, if we sign De Jong and he's, and he's looking for those balls from deep, Bruno should be able to find more balls for Ronaldo. And these two guys down here, oh, drawing another circle there. Sancho will be able to go down into these positions. Anthony will be able to go down into these positions. And together, they should be able to find a lot more service in the box for that man there. And ultimately, that's why I think you could argue that Anthony could be a perfect signing for Manchester United. It isn't that backup striker for Ronaldo that I think, I still think we're going to, we are definitely going to struggle this season if we don't get anybody in to give Ronaldo time off. But if he doesn't play in the Europa League games or the League Cup games or the FA Cup games and he just focuses on the on Premier League, we should be sweet. But I'll tell you what, he's going to be shagged after the World Cup just like everyone else is. So God knows what's going to happen in like January, February time. But I can understand the Anthony links. I'm looking at the prices. I'm seeing 69 million and I'm laughing. There's absolutely no chance that we're paying that much for Anthony. But you can let me know what you think about Anthony as a signing. Do you think he would be the perfect attacking signing? As I said, if you're taking a look at these, you can see how Ten Hag's style of play has developed and it's moved towards the wings and it's moved away from transitions. Deep possession and wing play. And we've got Ronaldo. We've got the greatest goal scorer of all time up front. So surely we need to improve the service to him. And maybe that's where Anthony can come in and give us a real genuine threat, consistent threat on the right-hand side and let Sancho make the left-hand side his own with the likes of Rashford, Ilanga, and Madame Palistri chomping at the bit to try and get in the team ahead of them. You let me know what you think about that in the comments below. And the price you think that is fair for Anthony. There's no chance we're paying 69 mil. But I'd be very interested to know where you stand on this one because I think this is, um, you can argue on both sides. It's whether you think a supporting striker is the best choice for an attacking signing or maybe somebody who can actually genuinely make the right wing his own at United for the first time in a long time long time.